Hi, I'm here with David Scott Bernstein, author of Beyond Legacy Code, Nine Practices to Extend the Life and Value of Your Software. And David, why don't you start us out by just telling us what your book is about? Certainly. In the first part of this book, I really talk about the problem of legacy code. Oh. The majority of the book, however, really focuses on what to do about it. And I cast this in terms of nine specific practices, but really there's many, many other ideas uh, that are th woven within the book to help developers be more effective. So it sounds like you're mostly writing to developers. Is that true? So I talk a lot to um, non-developers as well as developers. And perhaps for the first time, these technical practices are being uh, described in a way that non-developers can understand. A lot of teams are not getting the value that they want from Agile because they're doing the practices but not yet understanding the principles that underlie the practices or the purpose, why they're doing it. And really that's what this book stresses. Mm. Because the majority of cost in software comes in maintaining code rather than originally writing it. The very best developers that I know focus on writing maintainable code and this drops the cost of ownership for the software that they write. What is legacy code? Legacy code is software that for whatever reason is difficult for developers to maintain and extend. It may work for its intended purpose, but trying to repurpose it or use it for other, extend it or change it, becomes really difficult. And why is that a problem? Software is an asset, and like any asset, we want it to continue to provide value on an ongoing basis. The good news is that software is soft, which means that it can be written to be flexible and easily changeable if we pay attention to practices that support us in doing this. Does that just make more work for developers? The practices that I talk about in the book are actually huge time savers. Of course, there is a learning curve, like there is with anything. But once we go beyond that learning curve, these practices help save time both in the long term and also in the short term. Why would somebody want to buy your book? It addresses these technical issues in a non-technical way. It's not written as a user's manual. It's written in the first person and it just talks about stories from my own experience applying these practices. And this is really how human beings learn. We don't learn by memorizing a list of facts. Not, not in a way that we can really apply it. To really apply these practices, we have to really have an understanding of them. And that comes from experience or from learning from someone else's experience. So I'm sharing my experiences as a developer for the last 30 years, working with some of the top players in the industry. Great. I don't think of it as a how-to book. I think of this book more as a why-to book that discusses why we want to apply these practices and what the purpose underneath them is. It's not enough to just know what to do. We have to understand why to do it. And really that's what this book stresses and it helps both our managers and non-technical stakeholders to get on the same page with why these practices are valuable. Of course. Well, that's a lot to think about. If you find these ideas interesting, then I hope that you'll look for David's book, which is published by the Pragmatic Bookshelf, and check it out.